So in the last episode, we talked briefly about hashing. Uh, and let me back up a little bit and tell you, give you an idea of this whole idea of what hashing is. So the idea here is that you, ha you start with an array, and you want to be able to do things like store um, either numbers or store objects that are indexed uh, with some type of key uh, into that array. Um, so, for instance, we, can, we could have an array of integers, we could have an array of strings, we could have an array of, of uh, key items like we had um, when we were working on, um, um, we were working on trees. Uh, and you would use the key to basically create the key of that class, that key item class. You'd use the key to create that index into the table. Uh, and so what you do with the key then is you apply some function on it um, so that you can determine where to store uh, the element in the array. Um, in the case of, uh, let's say, a string key, we would have to convert it into some kind of number and then apply the mod operation in order to be able to store it in some, uh, in some location. So for instance, you know, if we had some string and we converted it uh, you know, by adding all of the characters uh, into a number, and then we wanted to use the mod operation. We could use a mod operation to uh, to s to determine where to store it uh, in the array. Uh, so I realize I've been sort of talking abstractly about um, how to actually store these things. The examples that I'll use will all be basically integers, but uh, the idea here is that you want to be able to take some key, whatever it is. Uh, convert it into a number, uh, apply a hash um, function to it, use that hash function to determine where it's going to be stored in the array. Okay, so uh, we uh, left off with talking about collisions, uh, and so what I want to talk about is, uh, in this episode, is how to deal with collisions. And the most common approach that's used is something called open address hashing, so we'll look at that here in a moment. There are a few other techniques as well that we'll look at uh, in this lecture. So open address hashing um, is uh, one of the ways that we deal with collisions. The idea here is that you compute uh, a hash value for some key. And uh, if that, um, uh, if the array, the data array, based on that, uh, that hash value is not occupied, then you go ahead and insert um, the key in that into the the array at that location. Otherwise, what you want to do is search forward, starting at uh, index uh, determined by the hash value plus um, some probe function value until you find a vacant position, uh, and then when you find that, then you insert the key there. Um, when you're uh, doing hashing, since we're using an array, we're going to uh, use it in a circular ma uh, manner so that uh, if you get to the end of the array, uh, since you're going to be applying mod, you'll just wrap around uh, and use index zero as the next thing tried if you're doing, um, if you're, you know, using these arrays. Uh, this method, uh, so if we use p of i equal to i, so, um, you know, we just, you know, increment in, uh, a um, counter by one, um, then this method is called linear probing. So basically the idea here is that uh, when we're searching forward, uh, if we find that this position i is vacant, then we're going to add one to i, and we'll, ch and we'll check the next, uh, the next location in the array. Uh, so that, that approach of uh, just doing an increment is called linear probing. Um, and so if we're creating, if we're using a hash function, our hash function will look something like this. Uh, using linear probing, we, we would um, check uh, the hash value plus i, and then mod that um, the size of the table. Now when we search for something in a table, um, what's going to happen is that based on the key, we're going to compute the hash value, and then we're going to check location uh, in the array based on this hash value, and if you were able to find it at that location, great. If not, then you're going to search forward using the probe function. So, uh, you know, using linear probing, we're going to add one 
or look at the next location in the array until we actually uh, until we find the item or we encounter an empty location or if uh, we've searched the entire table so in the case where we've ra wrapped or all wrapped all the way there around uh, or we've searched the entire list um, if we haven't found the item then our search is over so um, anyway so that's the that's the approach for actually searching and, and so uh, what I wanted to do is uh, uh, show you uh, a program that basically implements um, this uh, this approach um, so let me bring that program up so this is a hash table viewer that I created uh, and let me just create a small uh, array and so these represent empty locations in an array and so if I um, add elements to this array so I'm going to add an 11 to this array it ends up being hashed using mod and so 11 mod 10 is 1 so it ends up being located in location 1 so if I put 5 in here it goes to location 5 if I put not 96 in here it goes to location 6 um, let me try location or number 109 it gets hashed to um, location 9 um, and so b the basic algorithm here is that you know it takes the number applies the mod operation stores it in the array at those locations and then we can do something like a find with this program so I want to find 96 so I click on that do a find and then it, this program will tell me which location that number is actually in the table. Um, okay, so we've been talking about this idea of a collision. So if I add, let's say I add the number uh, uh, 107 to this hash table. Uh, sorry, 106 to this hash table. So if I do that, that's going to, 106 mod 10 is going to map to location 6 so when I add that, uh, it ends up being pushed to location 7 because location 6 is already occupied. And so then it just looks for the next open spot and, and slips it in there. When I actually do a search for, um, for the number 106 in my table, um, it's going to first go to location 6. It's going to find that that's the, not the number that's looking you're looking for. Then it's going to go to the next location. So the number of accesses for this is going to end up being 2 so it'll start here uh, it won't find it and so it'll look at the next location uh, and then actually find it alright so let's extend this example a little bit um, let me make the array size 20 and let me randomly add some numbers in here um, and let's see if we can determine um, whether or not there are any collisions okay so we first added 51 and then uh, let's see the number of accesses to locate that is 50 is uh, is 1 51 mod tw uh, 20 uh, in this case uh, let's see if we can find it oh yeah so it's in this location here that's uh, the 11th position in the array uh, let's see um, if we can then add, let's just add the number 11 to this um, thing here. And so we had, we're going to end up creating a collision with that so that when I actually do a search for number 11, well, it'll start by looking at uh, and getting a collision and then finding the next location where it's, that actually exists. Let's see if there are any collisions here. So we have 0 and 20. Um, because there is um, a little grouping here and so let me click on that on 20 and you see here that the number of accesses that are required here to find 20 is 3 we had 0 in the table uh, what else would we have had um, is that, oh 21 was that the other 21 was the thing that was that it's so 21 was actually stored in its proper location um, so when we try to add 20, 
uh, 20, the location 1 was occupied, so it had to go to the next element, to, the next location to actually add the number. Uh, so anyway, we'll be using this program when we, uh, 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 when you do your next assignment and in implementing some, uh, some hash functions. All right, so let's go back to the, the lecture. So uh, what we saw in that, um, uh, in that example was that we were getting some collisions. Uh, and uh, when you get a number of collisions, um, you end up having these clusters that form in the array around certain hash values. Uh, and so what ends up happening then is that when you get to these clusters, you no longer have sort of uh, these uh, uh, constant time accesses for the elements, or you don't get, you know, the, you don't find the element on the first, uh, uh, first access. You end up having to visit a couple more um, uh, locations in order to find the element. So what you end up having is that it may take longer to find or add because you have to move through the list in a linear fashion in order to move all the way through the cluster in order to add an element to, uh, to the array. Um, and then what you end up having is, is that elements get put farther and farther away from the desired index. And so we saw that in, um, in the example. So what we need to be able to do is have other methods that help us to avoid uh, clustering. Um, so here is uh, here's an example um, uh, taken from the text of how clusters can form. So let's say that I have uh, a 10 item in an array uh, and I've added elements um, that, that hash to uh, location 5, 2, and 3 into this array and that's fine but uh, as we start to add more things to the array so Here's something else that hashes to 5, here's something that hashes to 9, and this hashes to 2. You end up having these clusters that form. Uh, and that ends up um, de uh, degrading the performance of your hash table. Um, but nonetheless, you know, we need, so what we need is to have other ways to be able to deal with, uh, deal with these clusters. So uh, here's another example. So suppose I, I wanted to add uh, these numbers into my hash table in this order, then you end up having this cluster that looks something like this. Uh, let's actually go to the program and see if we can recreate this example with um, uh, with the program. So let me see back up here. Okay, so let me set the size to 10. And I'm going to add 89 first, and then 18, and then 49, 58, and then 9. Okay, so you see that um, the, all the values here should have either mapped to the it should have mapped to one of the last two locations, but since uh, there were already elements there, they just kept on being added to the front of the array. Actually, it ended up being wrapped around and added to the front. Uh, and then what we're going to have then is, uh, if I look at access average of this, um, access the average number of times that to locate an element is 2.4. So if I uh, do a find on the first one, it takes one. If I do a find on the second one, it takes one. But as I creep up and, and try to access each of these, the number of accesses that are required actually increases um, for each one of those elements. So you end up having this wraparound of the, um, of the search. Uh, and so that ends up happening because of the way that clustering works or the way that the hash table works. Everything's mapping here. We get this cluster that forms and that pushes the elements farther and farther away from where they should actually be stored. So if I tried to store again, uh, let's say number 99 into this, uh, it'll try to store it here, but then it'll have to uh, go to the end of the cluster and store it at the next element. So I add this, and you see here it gets added to the, that next element in the cluster. So when I go to find this, you see that it increases the number of accesses. Uh, and then my access average just keeps continues to go up here. 
Okay, so um, in order to address, um, well, there's actually so, some other techniques that are, are used in open addressing. We'll look at some other things for dealing with, um, uh, dealing with clustering here in a moment, but let's first look at uh, a quadratic function that could be used for open addressing instead of just using uh, a linear probing. So instead of having p of i equal to i, we're going to have p of i equal to this long thing here, which basically just uh, does a square of i and, ma and hashes your element uh, either at the key plus i squared or the key minus i squared. Uh, what did you end up having with this type of function, and, and we'll study this uh, in one of the homework assignments, I think. Um, but anyway, what you end up having is this idea that secondary clusters form. Um, so the clusters end up forming in different areas in the, uh, uh, in the array rather than uh, right at the, uh, at the location of the, of the primary cluster uh, around the key. Another uh, technique that's used to avoid uh, clustering is something called double hashing. So you have two hash functions instead of one hash function. Um, so you use the first hash function to determine the desired index. If you have a collision there, uh, then you use the second hash function to determine uh, where to store the next element. And so one, uh, one type of double hashing algorithm could use or would use something like this where you take i uh, plus uh, a second hash function and then of course you mod that in order to make sure it fits into the array. Uh, so anyway, so that would be a, a second technique uh, for dealing with uh, these collisions. Um, so let me, uh, so one of the things that's important for doing this double hashing is choosing the right uh, second hash function. Uh, so, you know, the, uh, the textbook um, t talks about um, using something like this as your second hash function. They talk about a number of other things with double hashing. Um, but, um, you know, essentially what you want to be able to do is have a second hash function to, that prevents you from visiting the original hash index um, before you've been visited, visited the entire array. Um, so there's a number of conditions here that should probably be true or it should be true in order to make sure that the, the second hash function works. Anyway, I, I don't want to go to, into it into too much detail. Um, you should take a, check out the text, uh, chapter 10, to see... Uh, uh, some ideas that they have there about uh, a second hash function. Anyway, so I'm going to uh, end this episode here. Next we'll talk about uh, chaining, um, coalesced hashing, and bucket addressing.